What's up everybody, welcome to MyPixel. As always, it's awesome to have you here. Today we're going to look at another powerful feature in Godot. The ability to modify your scripts and scenes while your game is running. It's an awesome feature that will save you loads of time while you're tuning and playtesting your game to get things just right. So let's go ahead and see how it works. Here we have a sample game for us to test some changes on. I'll try to quickly explain what life is like without the ability to see your changes updating in real time. So let's just say you're trying to play test your game. You've got your game running and something's not working right. Let's just say there's something about this jump you don't like. Like he doesn't jump high enough maybe. So then you have to stop your game, go into your script, make your adjustments in your script, go ahead and run your game to see if that's, that's what you need. All right, that jump is probably a little bit ridiculous, right? So you have to stop your game again. You have to go back in, adjust this, this number here, and then see what you got again. And maybe even that's too much. Then you, you have to stop your game again, and then you have to go ahead and repeat that same process over and over and over again, stopping your game, adjusting your script, running your game, stopping your game, <laughs> until you get exactly what you want. As you can probably imagine, and I'm sure some of you have gone through this, so you probably know how much of a pain this is. Luckily, there's a better way. Let's enable the ability to see our script changes in our running game. For that, we're going to go into our debug menu, and there's this sync script changes. We'll just click that. If you go back in the debug menu, you can see that the checkbox is now checked. Since I can only show you one monitor in the video, I'll just shrink my editor window so that I'm able to both edit my script and see the running game at the same time. Of course, this will work much better for you if you have two monitors or maybe one very large high res monitor as you'll be able to enlarge all your windows for better visibility without having your windows overlap or shrinking them to um, some kind of small size as I'm about to do. But in any case, again, only one monitor so we're going to have to roll with this. So let me just go ahead and shrink my window here. I think I'll extend it just a little bit. We want to just be able to see some of the code in here. All right. Then we'll go ahead and run our game. Okay, we'll make sure we push that over to the side. Okay, so now we can see our running game and we can go ahead and edit our code at the same time. So let's go ahead and enter our code over here. So let's see, we can go here, we can jump. We can see that that's much too high, much too high, okay. But from here, we can simply make an edit. Let's just say we want to see what it used to be. I think it used to be 500. We'll do that. We can go ahead and save. And then immediately, we can see that our changes are reflected. Pretty cool, right? But, okay, so now we have our baseline. All right, that's too low. I think we need to make it higher. 900 wasn't working for us, so maybe 800 will be good. No? Okay, well that's a little bit too high. So let's go ahead and how about we try 700. Save and try again. All right, that's pretty easy. So let's just go ahead and pretend that we're going to be happy with, with this jump. I'm sure you can see how we were able to quickly and easily adjust our script to get our game working just right. Now, some of you might have also noticed that the changes took effect without simply restarting the game. When we saved our changes, we retained our position in the stage. All right, so imagine if you were trying to tune a jump at the very end of a long stage. So let's just say we're going this way and we're running all the way in the stage. Let, let's just say this is like a hugely long stage, right? So we had to run for, for minutes to get to this point. Now, if you had to go ahead and do it the other way without this feature, then you would have to stop your game, adjust your script, and then, cont and then start your game again and work your way through the entire stage again until you finally got to this point where you can finally test this jump out. But with this feature, 
we can see we're here we vary it easily we go ahead and we change our our values in our script and we've got a different jump here right we held our position in the stage and everything so this is a very great uh, powerful feature and it's uh, potentially a huge time saver not only in scripts but we can also adjust other items directly into our scenes I'll, I'll show you what I mean but first we enable that feature by going back to the debug menu and then we sync scene changes click that just go back into, into the debug menu to, to verify that it's checked okay so Let's see for that. How about we run back to the start of our stage just because we can. Okay, so now with this set, we can adjust all kinds of things. So let's just say that we wanted to adjust an exported variable. So we got our game running over here, and then we got this, um, excuse me, the skeleton running back and forth. And then I've already set up this speed multiplier exported variable. This is very simple. This All it does is it takes its speed and it multiplies it by an integer, so right? So right now it's his base speed times one, which just gives him his base speed. But we can just hit these up and down arrows or we can type something in. Let's just change this to two. He should get twice as fast. And there you go, right? Instantly he's moving twice as fast. I can use the up arrows and down arrows too. We can make him three times as fast, four times as fast, five times as fast as as much as we want and these changes happen instantly which is the uh, instantly while the game is running which is the power here so as I'm watching the game I can I've got visual feedback for these changes that I'm making and I can see how you know it's very easy to fine-tune it when you can compare instantly like this when you're jumping back and forth into the script you know, you kind of have to visually remember how fast he was moving this is very easy to see oh yeah He's moving faster. Okay, he's moving slower. I think I like this. Now, what other changes do you think we should make to our scene? How about maybe we want some more enemies? For that, it's pretty simple. Let's just say we want another skeleton, right? That That's good enough. And maybe I want to put him right on this block over here. I don't have to stop my game. I just grab my skeleton, drop him on the block. Right? And you see in real time, he was added to the scene. Again, the uh, same concept works where if you're here and you're all the way over here in the scene, again, just to prove to you the uh, scene doesn't restart, I can go ahead, move down here, hold my position in the stage, even when I add new things to the scene. Godot simply adds them in and it's like nothing ever happened, right? Completely real time, completely transparent to me playing the game. I can just go along playing. Okay, so this is pretty fun. So let's see what else we can do. Let's say maybe we want to make some adjustments to our stage. So we've got a tile map here. Why don't we just add in some tiles? See if he can walk across them. So over here, I've got I've got a ground tile selected that's got collision boxes and everything attached to it so he should be able to collide with them. So why don't we put these here and see if he can walk across. We see him added over here and he walks straight across like nothing was ever wrong. We can go ahead and delete them. I'll delete this one so he, this guy he always stops at the edges he'll just bounce back and forth. I can delete the rest of them. Okay, or maybe I'll just go ahead and I'll add them in, I'll let them walk across, and then I'll delete one out from, from behind him, and then now he's stuck on this side, right? So you can even do this too. Now this feature, referred to in the Godot documentation as a hot reload, is such a huge time saver. The funny thing is that I actually didn't know that the feature existed for a decent amount of time. Um, in the previous versions of Godot, I think this was um, these options, these debug, sync scene changes, and sync script changes weren't actually checked by default. Um, in the betas that, in the 3.1 betas that I've used so far, they're all checked by default. So if you're using the beta, it's probably already checked in there. But um, if you're not sure, Again, this is such a great feature. Please go ahead, 
jump into your debug menu here and please make sure that you have it enabled in your projects and that you're taking full advantage of it. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope you found this helpful. If you like this video, please give it a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. Also, please feel free to leave me a line in the comments to let me know how things are working out for you and your project. And with that, we'll call it a day. So thanks again to everyone for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Okay. <laughs>